In this module, let's look at timing paths. In this module, let's identify the types of timing paths, how do we calculate the uh, slack for every timing path, and also determine uh, an example uh, small circuit and uh, what the worst timing path in that circuit is. The timing paths are broken down relative to a clock meaning uh, they're all considered synchronous. So let's say the data arrives at a start point relative to a clock. So that's the launch clock. And then the data is captured at an end point, again, relative to another clock, which is the capture clock. And the clock signal is the one that is resetting the time at the register, and it starts a new cycle. So as long as the data meets both the setup and the whole requirements, then it is propagated through the register and to the next stage. So the new data now uh, has a new clock cycle uh, during which it can propagate to the register after that. And so therefore, basically, the register or the flop is resetting the timing of the path at the clock edges. So in order for static timing analysis to make paths and understand the timing and try to meet the timing of all the paths, uh, the SDA tools are breaking the timing paths at the registers and basically making one clock cycle or one clock period as the timing goal for each of these timing paths. So you have two types of start points in a timing path the input port of a design, anything other than a clock port, is actually considered as a start point. And then uh, the clock pin of a sequential cell, that is considered as a start point as well. There are two types of endpoints. So the data input of a sequential cell is considered as an endpoint, and also the output port of a design is considered as an endpoint. A timing path is nothing but a combination of all the timing arcs from the start point to the end point. So for timing analysis, the start point and type endpoint combinations are classified into path types, and each of these path types have different requirements and different analysis styles that are required for SDA. So in the case of uh, input to register, you need to have what the uh, input delay at the port, or also known as the data arrival time at the port. And uh, for the register to output, you need to have the external output delay of that port, and uh, also known as output delay. And for input to output paths, they need some kind of budgeting because there is no clock uh, right there. So you can actually use virtual clocks for those input-output paths, and uh, or you can actually set uh, path delay restrictions like uh, max delay and min delay and so on. Now, the register to register paths are the only ones uh, that uh, use uh, the clock at both the input side as well as the output side. So you need those clock definitions to actually uh, define uh, what uh, the requirement for a register to register path is. As you can see in the picture, there might be multiple paths between the same start point and end points or uh, to the same end point. And so therefore, each path is timed separately by the SDA tool to determine what the worst path is. And then uh, it is also independently uh, used to verify the setup and hold requirements. So how are these timing paths timed? Uh, simply, we just add up all the uh, delays of the timing arcs in the path and come up with whatever the delay of the entire path is. And then that uh, total path delay is then verified against what the timing requirement of that particular path is uh, to tell you whether that particular path is uh, passing or failing uh, in terms of uh, meeting the requirements. 
So um, basically, the cell delay timing arcs uh, base, uh, come from the library, and uh, the net delay arcs are actually either coming from the uh, wireload models or uh, the layout estimation that uh, uh, the tools do. One thing to note is that uh, STA tools do consider the effect of uh, uniqueness on the timing arcs. Um, and the uh, libraries have information for both rising as well as falling. And the worst case of both the uh, rising and falling is actually considered. And once that is determined, um, depending on what the actual uh, transaction that is happening, whether it's rising or falling, uh, that is what is actually used and plugged in into the timing reports. But uh, as far as our discussions are concerned, uh, we'll just ignore the effect of uh, uniqueness in our discussions here. Arrival time is usually calculated from uh, the start point or the launch clock. And uh, the required time is based on the capture clock. And so therefore, uh, the difference between the required time and the arrival time is what is considered as slack. So if you're meeting timing, it's because your slack is positive. And if you're not meeting timing, uh, it's because your slack is negative. Now, these values, uh, the slack that is shown here is for setup and uh, for hold. Uh, the slack is considered typically as arrival time minus required time. And the slack values are actually included in all timing reports. And you will see if there is a violation uh, that the slack is either considered uh, met, so there is no violation, or it's violating and therefore is indicated as a violation when it's a negative slack. For a register to register path, the requirement is that your clock to queue delay plus any combinational delay must be less than or equal to your clock period minus any setup time. So that if we uh, translate that into the required time and arrival time and slack calculations, uh, basically your required time is clock period minus setup time and your arrival time is your uh, clock to queue delay plus any combinational delay. So that is your arrival time. So arrival times are calculated uh, from the start point, uh, which is the launch clock, and required times are typically calculated from uh, your uh, capture clock. So, uh, so far, based on all our definitions, uh, the required time, arrival time, and uh, uh, slack calculations are uh, done as uh, shown in the graphic here. Some tools might actually uh, move the setup into the arrival time calculation, but the idea is the same. You're just looking at the arrival times and the required times as uh, two different set of data, and then arriving at the uh, slack calculation based on um, what the same equation, which is the uh, required time minus arrival time for setup and uh, vice versa for hold. Now, one more thing to uh, understand is that uh, because um, we're just dealing with ideal clocks for the most part here, um, there is no uh, clock delays or um, you know uh, uncertainties or anything like that that are being uh, recorded in these equations. But if they come into play, they, they actually become part of either the arrival time or the required time, depending on uh, where uh, they fit in, whether it's the launch clock or the capture clock. The default hold check is done at time zero. And so therefore, your required time is uh, where the hold check is actually done, uh, plus uh, your hold time. Um, so. Uh, the arrival time is basically your clock to queue delay plus any combinational delay. So your slack is the arrival time minus required time. So for the most part, if your hold times are small enough, uh, your uh, design should be able to meet the um, hold requirement. Considering that there are no uh, huge skews between uh, the different flops. For an input to register type of setup requirement, uh, what happens is yeah, there is no visible launch clock. 
um, but we pretend that there is a launch clock that is actually outside of uh, the uh, required module uh, that is being constrained or your block or your design and uh, basically with that pretend um, outside world uh, we come up with uh, something called the uh, uh, combo delay 1 and combo delay 2 and also the uh, R1 flop which determines uh, the clock to queue delay so when there is such an outside world all of this can be lumped into what is called the input delay so your clock to queue plus combo delay 1 is lumped into as an input delay and then what is seen within your module is combo delay 2 and the setup requirement and then the clock period is the clock period of your clock so a required time becomes required uh, the clock period minus the setup time for your R2 flop and uh, that is what is in your design and then uh, the arrival time is noted as the input delay plus combo delay 2 uh, or if we want to truly break it down into the clock to queue plus combo delay 1 you can also do that now your slack is the same old equation which is the required time minus arrival time for hold uh, the same required time applies which is the hold check of 0 and hold time of uh, the flop that is being verified or checked and or uh, is capturing the data and uh, your arrival time is whatever input delay plus combinational delay 2 and so therefore uh, your slack is arrival time minus required time and again all the external delays are measured relative to a clock and so therefore uh, whatever input delay you're seeing you have to define that input delay somewhere uh, using your constraints for the purposes of register to output paths we again make up an outside world and determine an external delay and uh, for the setup slack we use the same clock period uh, which actually is the launch clock and pretend that there is another flop that is being driven outside uh, using the same clock and uh, basically come up with the requirement of uh, uh, set up slack which is clock period minus clock to queue minus the combinational delay one and any external delay um, which is actually registered as combo two plus uh, the setup time so uh, for hold uh, you would actually use the hold check plus hold time and uh, any phase shift and combo delay and external delay are actually subtracted from it so um, again, uh, here we, we are making up an outside world and creating an external delay. So this external delay is something that must be defined through your constraints. For the purposes of uh, input to output paths, uh, normally you can actually set uh, an input delay or an output delay with respect to a clock. Um, but because uh, these paths don't have any clock defined, you need to use a virtual clock and uh, this virtual clock or dummy clock uh, can then define the slack for your uh, combinational paths so and uh, basically you would subtract your input delay and output delay and any combinational delay uh, within that particular uh, design uh, from your clock period to come up with the slack and you can also constrain your paths using path delay constraint so uh, you can specify what um, paths you want to constrain such way and then uh, set that constraint that way. Try and identify the uh, timing path types in each of the uh, following illustrations. Um, the answers would uh, follow pretty quickly.
try the uh, following activity to improve your understanding. 